If oppression goes unchecked, that is what happens. Today we all are against oppression, aren't we? Yes? What happened in Iraq, if you ask me, that was oppression without question. But like I asked this gentleman here, who was accountable for it, were any prime ministers or presidents or the uh, MPs who agreed with it, who were basically the key people to take the war ahead, were any of them accountable today? They are living a perfectly normal life today. In fact, they are living a better life than many of us today. Yes? Why, why is this? Why is well, our what, society come down to mean, this? What do you mean by accountable? Accountable means people who basically made a mistake. Because of that mistake, thousands of people have died. Have they been accountable? Have they been brought to the court? Have they basically been put on trial? Because to me, they have done something majorly wrong. And anyone who does something wrong, they have to be taken, uh, justice has to be served. What about those victims who died? Who is going to basically serve justice to them? Do they not deserve justice? Oh, is there a difference between us, me, because mm. I'm a citizen of this country? Yeah. So, in retrospect, you could say, like in a murder case, you could be accessory to murder. Because I'm donating tax money to be dropped, to be used to uh, fund dropping bombs in the country, to do so other people no, you, are accountable as well. No, you, you, cannot, you cannot say because you paid the tax money. Did you sign anywhere? No, but I'm saying, that, am I sort of not condoning it because I am funding Oh, I Something see. Are you saying are you are you are, are you guilty as well? Is yeah, that what you're saying? Guilty, yeah, no, you're not because you did not sign a paper saying that my tax money should be used for war money. Did you say that? No. no if no, you I said that say specifically, that, because everyone, we don't have such a choice, you, you, do we? You, you can Trust me. If there was such a choice, yeah. If there was such a choice that the government would give me a paper to sign on that my tax money should not be used for any wars, I would happily sign it. Yes, we all would. But what I'm saying is, my money right now. Well, I know the NHS or the NHS. You have no choice, bro. You and I have no choice. We pay taxes. Where our tax money is being used, maybe at local council level, you might have some say. But as far as the higher, uh, like the prime minister's level or at that level, you have no say. They will use your tax money if, if they feel right. They will take the whole country to war. But that's, On a pretext of some, well, what was it? Uh, it was basically just a dossier, isn't it? Which, the, which some yeah, student had written. Yeah, the dodgy dossier. Yeah, the dodgy yeah. dossier yeah. Yeah. Oh, but the same thing does the dictator. Let's say you have no choice. We, I mean, we have a choice, choice to vote for them. And I mean, they do a lot of bullshit. But the same thing does a dictator. And I mean, still the people always pays for what the dictator decides. So. Well, I'm not condoning that you should have a dictator. Yeah. All I'm no, saying no, is that no. there has to be justice yeah. to the people who have been oppressed. That's all I'm saying. And to me, no civilized nation or person would disagree with that. When someone has been wronged, you have to correct the wrong. When someone is basically oppressed, you should basically hold those oppressors to account. That's all I'm saying. And that is a universal law. That is in the Geneva Convention. But has it been applied? No, it hasn't. That's all I'm saying. And that's why I'm telling you, we come back to God because God legislates. For example, you know the wars that you see in the Quran? And I'll be the first one to say that anyone who says that there is no mention of wars in there, they're wrong. They haven't read the Quran. What were those wars for? Those wars were basically for people who were being oppressed. It says Sorry, if you have to go, you the wars, for example, the wars in uh, the people who came, the pagans who marched all the way to Medina and Mecca. Sorry, to Medina to go and wage wars against this minority of Muslims. Oh, right. Yes, the, the, the these wars. And that's what I'm telling you. In the early years. Of yeah, in the early years, right, years right. of Islam. So those wars, and it was defensive which were, which were war, fought. It was always defensive. Yeah. After that. And by the way, you can always also, defensive. you can always also have, defensive. no, no, not necessarily. You can also have no, offensive no, no, wars. I'll, I'll tell you why. Oh, right. For example, I will agree with the war. Up, I'll agree with the first okay. war against Saddam Hussein, who oppressed another country, Kuwait, to annex their land. So what? Majority of the Muslim countries and the Western countries got together and kicked out Saddam Hussein. That is an offensive war. And I agree with that as well. So we missed out so what I'm saying, years oh, so what I'm saying. So what I'm saying. Defense, defending Kuwait. Yeah. Well, for, for, for the Americans and all, it wasn't, is it? Yeah, it for them, it was a defensive defense, war. It's, it's, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. You need to what defend. You yeah. the, it wasn't just an arbitrary yeah. act of aggression. What about Kosovo? What about Kosovo? What about Kosovo? Oh, you mean whether, whether it was right, the war, or it was, who started the war? In Kosovo. Well, it, it, if I remember rightly, and it was yeah. about 20 years ago, um, that that and Bosnia Herzegovina, the, the, there was who were the oppressors in that, yeah, in mean, that war? Civil war between yeah. the the Serbs, Croats, and the mainly Muslim Bosnians. Yeah. Uh, I, I I remember arguing at the time we, we 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 should not have let it go on for so long. We should have intervened. This this was before the days when liberal intervention got a bad name. Oh. So so there was a point where NATO. It was in NATO's boundary, and it, it seemed quite clear that it, 
it was the responsibility of NATO to send in peacekeeping forces. It took a damn long time for NATO to do that, and there were some terrible events on the way, like Srebrenica. But eventually, in, in uh, Bosnia Herzegovina and in Kosovo, NATO forces, including America, went in and brought some sort of peace to the country. Yeah, but I, I just I gave you the example of some images of Tony Blair being question. greeted by Muslims. Haley was a hero. There's a lot of kids in Kosovo called Tony, apparently. So, my point is, is that the world is a complex place. That, that, you know, that there's sometimes that was a war. Are all wars wrong? No, no, exactly. That was a good judgment. It turns out Iraq was a bad judgment. It turns out. Yeah, but that's all I'm telling you. You see, I'm not, I'm not questioning the good judgment. I'm talking about the bad judgment. Well, you should question them all if you think. No, no, wait. If, you, let, no, let, if, if something is good, rocks, why are you going to question it? You should have, I mean, if you're going to take a really good left turn over there, should I question that? Or should I question you taking the wrong turn on the roundabout? You see, people don't question which Sorry, you, when, lost, you do, when you do something right, people don't question you. When you do something ra wrong, yeah. that is when you're so questioned. What, so what was wrong? Was the Kosovo rule wrong? No, I didn't say it was wrong. Well, was I, it? I'm asking well it was wrong in the sense that they came uh, quite late to defend yeah, the people right. who yeah, were being yeah, oppressed. Yeah. So it was so wrong in that wrong? sense. I'm right. talking about the war, for, for example, Iraq and so on. These wars were wrong, With and the no one of was freeing Iraq from Saddam Hussein, a vile dictator. Yeah, who was killing, at the expense of at the expense of how many millions? Yeah. Oh yeah. They shove it under the carpet, isn't it? All oh, those victims. Expense of? expense of the people who died there. Why? Why? Why did they? Wait, wait. Could the West take out Saddam Hussein if they wanted to? Just Saddam Hussein. Could they do it? Clearly they were. Could they assassinate him if they wanted to? No idea. I'm not a special forces operative, am I? Well, you don't have to be. I'm saying if they, if they had the ability, they could have. Have they tried that? No, they didn't. I don't like for example, if Andy's There you go. So that, that's what I'm telling you. If something is wrong, if people have been oppressed, if people have been killed unjustly, you should definitely question that, and the people who are responsible should definitely be brought to account. That's all I'm saying. There's many other videos on there as well. Do you agree or disagree with that? Okay. It's, a, it's a sound general principle. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I think they've exhausted. I hesitate, <laughs> I hesitate to get into details about things like Iraq, Israel, Palestine, because it's so complicated. I've tried to understand. It. No, well, well there we go. Go. people who say it's not complicated have so not easy. tried to study yeah, it at all. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Land for people without people. No, people who you no, no. Have it, it became complicated when it started. When it started, it was clear as one was the oppressor, the other was oppressed. It was very clear. Whether you agree or disagree, I'm not going to. If you look at otherwise. In, in if, 10 minutes to speak, it's if you look at the initial history of those wars, you'll see how, how simple it was to resolve. But it didn't so, get so at the end of it, I win. Thanks, guys. I don't think that's how it <laughs> I suggest you watch the video. <laughs> I haven't been on YouTube. Before you make that decision. Where should they watch it? SC Dawa. SC Please, please subscribe. I get told off by the cameraman. Was, like I said uh, earlier on, yeah, is that the uh, law don't don't straight away down walls that are in in, in, a, in a holy book. I would I would agree with you. Always check on them. That's fair. I'm fair. Question them, Andy. Question them. I'm fine with that. That's the best thing to do. Come and question them. Question their morality, and I'm pretty sure you'll find the Quran is not like any other religion, and you know Islam is not like any other religion. The laws make sense, and they're there for a reason. And if you uh, if you clash them against the laws of today, I guarantee you 100%. You know, like you know I remember I remember the arguments we used to have before that religion forces laws on you. For example, the law of getting uh, addressing, for example, you know, women in Islam, they cover from head to toe, yes? So many people used to say that they have been forced to do it. You ask many of those women today, they say, no, we bear it out, out of our own will. What if they wait, wait, wait a minute. Yes. Now today what's happening, these liberals in these societies, they are forcing it off some, them, some, yeah. yes? Yeah. Now you tell me, the people who force it on them and the people who force it off them, What's the difference? Both are imposing the, the laws, you see what I mean? <laughs> so after all the trial and error, we come back to square one again in those things. That's what I'm telling you. This trial and error doesn't work in society. The liberal idea of this of subjective morality doesn't work. So do you have a wife? I do, yeah. Does she wear the hijab? She wears a hijab, yeah. So what if she decided to not wear it anymore? Would you oppose it? Would I oppose it? Yeah. I would disagree with it, but I wouldn't force it on her because then she'll be doing it for me and not for God. See? You see, I want her to do it out of her own will, yes, for God. That. Because you see, what is the objective of the hijab? It is basically for her recognition as a Muslim, as a, as a, as a believing Muslim, and something that God has ordained. These two principles are very important and it's part of her religion. 
But for a country like, uh, I don't know, where is it banned in France, for example, they force it off of the women. So even these women, they do it. You see, people are allowed to dress how they want. People can go naked over there, no one will talk. But as soon as they cover, why did she cover? Who told her to cover? No, she's oppressed. Why don't you ask that lady? Ask that woman if she's been oppressed. And if she's been oppressed, then take the step of basically enforcing the law. What you're doing is the other way around. First shoot, then ask questions. It doesn't work like that. This is the trial and error. We always come back. We always go back to this uh, ancient law where you impose things, where you force things. And this is not what the liberal, the, I think the, the early liberals wanted it as well. Here's, here's a question. If somebody is oppressed, yeah. such that they, they're, they're kind of tied into an ideology that, that they are still being objectively oppressed, are they likely wait, to wait, answer wait, wait, the question? Need, are they likely to answer You need to question, clarify that. Are you being oppressed? Are you talking about oppression of thought or are you talking about oppression of thought. physically? Yeah, that's but what that's, I meant, an ideology, yeah. Yeah, but so, you see oppression so, of thought, that is subjective, isn't it? Well, we, we can set up some guidelines to... Like, for example, when you bring up your children, oppressed. they will most likely grow up as atheist agnostic. Uh, are, you, are you imposing those ideas on them? Most likely. Even I, though you if might... If I had children, I think what I'd want to do yeah. is, is introduce them to all the world's great religions. Okay. I, mean, I, I think this is how families should work. I start with the Quran. So, so in, yeah, exactly. In your, in your household, <laughs> yes. the Muslim household, and, and, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to, to run your family affairs, but as a kind of idea, which had I been a no, parent, no, I think this is what I would do. No, I'm talking about your, I'm talking I, about I your personal look, Here's the world's religion. Families. Our household is yeah. agnostic atheist, but from a Christian background. And here are all the other religions, and that's how I'd like schools to operate, all schools to operate. So when you get to a, an age where you can make a decision, then it's up to you to make a decision. But they do. Many, that's the reason many people uh, leave Islam. Um, there's a reason many people come into Islam. Because when they grow up, they, yeah. they, are, they, are not, they are not hermits sitting at home or sitting yeah. in a cave. They basically go around and so mix with people Islam in universities. It's a smooth process, is it? No Say again? Leaving Islam, it's a, a nice smooth process. Well, no, it is no in this problem. country from what I know. <laughs> it, oh. is, it is in this country no, from I, what I know. I didn't say in this country. Yeah. Andy, Andy, listen. And, and listen, according to the Andy, tenets Andy, of Islam. Andy, Andy, look. If your child, yeah, you're, you, you seem very liberal, yeah? If your child wants to become Muslim, I believe, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you would never come with it. No. Right. But this, and, well, but, but, but you're not opposing at all. Two levels. Uh, excellent. Uh, respecting the child's liberty to make their own decision, excellent. not a problem. Excellent. With the actual decision, oh yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I might, so, but so I'm at, to discuss at, it. And what? Ah, what was it now, about? That's exactly and maybe, what if, do. they're probably going to be far brighter than I am, because my that, children are Andy. bound to be far brighter, <laughs> and they've convinced me. <laughs> A bit humble you. there, Andy. <laughs> They'll be bad. Andy, it's the same thing in Islam. If somebody wants to leave, like for example, if, if, his, if uh, the brother's wife wanted to take his hijab off, he's not going to throw a party, is he? Right. Is he going to throw a party? No. What he's That's the reason I said I'll disagree with it. He would disagree with it and he but would not impose it with her. He's not going to say amazing, great deal because he believes that's not right. Do you understand what so, I mean? So according the to the... Is, she would still have her freedom. Sorry, Andy. She would still have her freedoms to make that choice. Doesn't mean we have to be happy about it. That's just, that's logical. Just like Andy said, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy. You would allow them to take the, make the choice of becoming uh, Muslim, but you would definitely question it. You would say, look, let's iron out the details. I don't think it's right. That's fair, right? In the same way as I if they want to become a I communist. I agree with you. I agree with you, Andy. And that's exactly what he just yeah. said. So we're not, we're not, you know, no one said the belt's going to come out, no one said the stick's going to come out, whatever you think is going to come out. This is something that's hyped up by the media. Like I said, find, find the sisters who are saying that this hijab is forced to me, help me. Because if they said that, trust me, before anyone else gets that, the Muslims will. And, and by the way, the question I want to ask you, Andy, is at what age would you allow them to take that freedom of, of choosing whatever faith or whatever ideology or whatever way of life? <laughs> so at, the 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 at the age of 2021, so yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. at the age of 2021? So, so at the age of 18, they have no... Enough. Are you saying at the age of 18, they're not reasonable enough to drink? No. no? So we should we should move that drinking age to 21 now? People always oppose laws, so... That's, that's yeah. a good point you made, you know? Yeah. yeah I know. I mean, <laughs> you see, this is what I mean about you subjective you morality can, you can, in the society. You can be we, rational at this age. We now know voting, 45. <laughs> It's your point of what's a this? neuropsychologist. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Now watch this. Now, what's your background, by the way? Sorry? Well, what's your background? What do you do for a living? Um, I study psychology and history. Psychology um, and history. Yeah. Interesting. So my point was, sorry, 
the, the fact is, like you said, it depends when they get right. So Islam, do you know what Islam says about that? About making decisions about, for example, fasting and things like this, yeah? It says if the child is when they reach puberty, the age of puberty. Now different children reach the age of puberty at a different time. Is that not more logical than saying, oh by the way, when you're 18 you can just drink? Some kids in this country are totally irresponsible drinking at 18. Drive a car straight into a crowd of people. That wasn't drunk, by the way, no. the other day. But the fact is, then, you know, this is human laws. This is why we're saying it's moralistically based. Where's your morals based? Probably back around is in religion somewhere. And that's where it's all got mixed up. What we're saying is this book has come. We're saying it's from God. It has solid laws that actually make sense. Find us the flaws. What would what what you end it? What age would you say they, they have the right to exercise their freedoms? Because I, uh, I think she said 21, if I remember correctly. What about you? There has to be a come on. There has to be a. I don't think it's a cut and dry thing because because it's not something like. No, no, give me a range. Give me a range. Don't, like not the exact oh. age or the date. Give me a range. At what range age would you think they are they're perfectly capable of making their own decisions? Is it English? It is, but there's still some, there's still some, some, some children are quick, you know, as, as, uh, yeah. you know, at the age of 12, they might have a more insight than most adults. Right. Others grow up and they never have much insight at all, so you can't lay down. So if you had a child, you judge. You judge. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, like I said, they have autonomy, you know, and it's a gradual thing, isn't it? Well, you know this. And there's a reason I'm asking you the age, because obviously you won't give them autonomy. <laughs> You wouldn't give them autonomy at the age of uh, at the age of seven, would you? Yeah, no, of course. You wouldn't. You wouldn't let them drive a car at the age of nine, would you? You know this better than I do as a parent. Yes. It, it's a constant sort of how much more freedom can I give them? And obviously you have the, your religion to guide you in that. But even so, I don't suppose there's much in the Quran about driving a car or riding a motorbike. No, it's, 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 so there's a general. Uh, when can they go out by themselves? All yeah, there's, 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 there's a general age at which yeah. things are permitted yeah. in your adult life as compared to a, before yeah. your adult life. That's fair enough. And that's the reason I'm asking, look, if, if for example, uh, drinking alcohol, or for example, driving a car, or even in this country when washing porn, yes, there has to be an age up to when you, it's, it's legal or illegal, you see what I mean? Or having sex, for example. Obviously, in, in law, there has to be a, uh, yes. an age. Yes. The, that, that's, yeah, so that's, that's part of the problem, because the law has to be framed quite precisely. You can't say, oh, when you're ready for it, or, you know, whatever. But, but in, in, in actual reality, the way a, a person's psychology and personality develops is not so clear. Cut, is it? I know plenty of adults who are not fit to drive a car. They should never be allowed near a car. They, they're wrong. I mean, maybe it's have psychological No, we're no exception. We're talking general rule. Yeah. Uh, Let's not make exceptions at all. Actually, in law, um, you can be tried for a crime uh, yeah. from the age of 11 up to 12 up. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's a kind of thinking there that says at a certain point in a child's development, we say at 11, then they have, they're able to distinguish it right and wrong. Do you see the contradiction there? Between what and what? Between the law saying you can do certain things at this age, yeah. uh, and you saying, well, it's subjective, you have to judge a child people. Well, yeah, yeah. But then the law there's saying, two different ways of approaching the problem. Then do you see how that's a problem there? Yeah. Just yeah. about the you see what I mean? Yeah. I think this is the point that's, that you're trying to Well, I don't know if it is, but, but, but it, it's a shape. All laws are like this, you know, whether the religious laws or. or no, no, but, but the religious they have, have a very clear de demarcation, yeah. but not so in people who do not follow uh, an organized religion. That's what I'm saying. And this has always been a battle for since I don't know how long. Yes, since time immemorial. This has always been the battle as who decides the laws and what where, what, where do you draw the lines basically of legality and illegality, of permissibility and permissibility. This is always so for you to say that we in the body of British law. Right? It is not. It's changing constantly. No, as a law student, I can tell you it's not. Oh, it's changing constantly. Okay, if you look at, for example, uh, the whole system that we currently use, the case by case development. Yeah. So each case, if it's different to previous cases, the law will change according yeah. to that case. Right? Yeah. This does not make any sense. It, it cannot work. That's the way we do. That's the way we do things, but it doesn't necessarily make sense. Okay, so that's beside the point. And there can be bias involved as well. Of course, of the judge, of the jury. If you look at previous yeah. cases before, for example, when homosexuality was actually legalised, there were cases coming along, such as the case of R.V. Brown, such as the case of the Crown and Wilson, such as the case of um, the Crown and Barnes. These cases developed the law case by case, right? But they were homophobic 
decisions in these cases. If you look at the decision of uh, judges such as Lord Templeman, in the case of the Crown and Brown, there are very homophobic uh, uh, remarks being made there. Right, so those decisions overturned? They were later preceded by case law. Right, so okay, the Crown yeah. and Brown was preceded by the Crown and Wilson. Yeah. And then this was preceded by the Crown, uh, Attorney General reference number you six. You know your stuff. Yeah, well, I'm you know what? I mean, the great thing about this for you is that it, it creates a lifetime income yeah. for lawyers. Well, I mean, you don't just go to a book and say, right, da da da, there you are, that's the answer. People like you have to plow through that. Yeah, Come on, don't criticise it. Someone has to do a job. <laughs> that's why I'm wearing sunglasses. I've got bags under these guys. That's the problem. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, but no,